this thing on? Hello, I think we're live now. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth edition of the Airbyte, uh, the Airbyte community call. Uh, this, this is going to be pretty exciting. We have an awesome guest in, uh, in uh, Tuan Nguyen from uh, June Solutions that's going to give a really cool demo about how they deploy Airbyte. And before that, we're going to kind of jump into some uh, what's been going on behind the scenes uh, at Airbyte HQ. So, uh, Sharif, you want to advance the slides? Uh, All right, let's get yeah. it started. <laughs> let's go. Um, so, yeah, first, I'm going to just do a really quick community update. Uh, Sharif's going to talk about our engineering roadmap. Marco's going to talk about user success, and then we'll get on to uh, Tuan. Uh, if we want to go on to the next slide. Uh, as you know, for those that it, it may be their first time, uh, and for everyone else, you'll, you'll get to hear a nice refresher. We are Airbyte. We are looking to be the open source standard for moving data from wherever you have data to wherever you can use it or leverage it. And we have been on this mission for, for a while now, and we're, we're really happy with how the community has been been going. There's been a lot of contribution. There's been a lot of a uh, lot of interactions, and it, it's really exciting to see the the whole project develop. And uh, and yeah, we got we got Robert Stolz in the chat. He's uh, he he gave an awesome presentation at our last community call. If you want to go check the vod out for that, uh, go go ahead into our, to our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, sure if you want to advance advance the slides. So, so last time I, I said that this graph looks fake and it still looks fake. So it, it's a, uh, it's it's uh, our our growth is very has been very consistent. Uh, if you want to continue on to the uh, so we've been we've had people who are using Airbyte grow. We've had uh, our weekly Slack uh, Slack members, the active Slack members, and GitHub contributors, whether that's issue or pull requests, uh, grow. Every uh, we're in this really awesome. Uh, Growth period and it's uh, it's it's been really exciting. So um, uh, go ahead and uh, take away the the uh, engineering roadmap, Shreve. All right, thank you, Avi. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what we've been up to the past month and where we're going this coming month. So last month, um, some of the highlights that we delivered. One of the top features that people were asking for in order to deploy Airbyte instances is first class support for Kubernetes. So you know the single instance deployment situation was fine, but People wanted a more fault tolerant um, method of deployment that fit better with their workflow. Kubernetes was top of the list for that. So we were able to deliver that this past month. Automatic migration. So you remember how you had to do um, you know, 5 million commands in order to migrate your Airbyte instance. Um, and we do weekly releases, so there you go. Uh, well, no more of that. So we have automatic migrations now. Um, the way you run it is that you just git pull and restart Airbyte, and you have the new version. Um, also, support for user-defined DBT models. Anytime you want some custom DBT code to run after a successful sync, you just configure that in the connection settings page, and it'll run whatever DBT project you'd like to run. And finally, table-level namespace configurations. Um, you can now set those on your connection. That was also a highly requested feature. So that's just on the core side of things. In terms of connectors, let's talk about those. So we delivered 50 new connectors last week, or sorry, last month. <laughs> Would have been a really good week. Uh, last month, um, 50 new connectors. And like we said, we have a very aggressive goal of hitting 200 by the end of the year. So we're really marching towards that. I'm not going to go through the list of connectors. I'm happy to go through them offline. Um, and in terms of connector development highlights, you can now write Java destinations. The code generator and docs are now available. So Feel free to check that out. Uh, we already have a couple of people who wrote destinations uh, and or are in, the prog are in the process of doing that. We also released uh, an, a patch release of our Python CDK containing a few improvements and new features, um, completely backwards compatible, so there's no danger to upgrading. And then our source acceptance tests, which if some of you are not familiar, is, um, are basically the test suites that we run internally for any of the connectors that we develop. They're also available for the community. Um, basically, every source connector needs to pass this standard set of test suites. It now validates data schemas. So if your connector says, I output integers in this area and it doesn't, it will fail CI and you won't be able to release that, um, which is for the good, of course, of the, of the connector users. So uh, I think that's most of what I have um, in terms of progress for the last month. 
what are we going up, what are we going to do in this next month? So we're working on Airbyte Cloud closed beta. We're hoping to release that early August. So that's one of the top priorities for the team right now. Basically, a SaaS solution where it's hosted by Airbyte contains dedicated authentication, authorization, multiple workspaces. It will still have all the features that the community uh, open source, you know, offering that you're using today has. It'll just be less of a hassle to run. We're also supporting storing Airbyte configuration in an external database. So right now it's stored in Docker volumes. In the future, you'll be able to store it in um, and point it to an external database like Postgres. Uh, another one is SSL tunnels for databases. Um, and then, of course, new connectors. Uh, like we said, we're working very hard on churning out a large amount of connectors, quality connectors as well. Um, so yeah. Some of the highlights are going to be an S3 source, uh, Kafka both on the source and destination, uh, and then GCS and Azure Blob destinations. Um, yeah, and there's, of course, more. Um, if you want a particular source or destination, please engage with us on the GitHub issues. Uh, we have a very dynamic backlog, and we're always uh, working with the community to prioritize our work. So I think that's all I have. And Marcos, take it away. Okay, uh, you can pass the, the slide. So, uh, hey, Marcus here. It's very nice that our community is growing and there is a lot of discussion on Slack and GitHub. So for this reason, uh, Sheriff, can you pass the slide, please? Yep. Thank you. I'm just, I'm trying to, uh, here we go. So three topics that I want to bring. So the first one is, uh, I create a template for the, the messages on the top troubleshooting channel. So this can help a lot to discover uh, very quickly the, the problem and help us to give you a proper answer. So you can find, find this on the pinned message and also on the, our website. So you can you see an example there. Also, we created uh, two new channels, the Understanding Airbyte and Contributing to Airbyte. Uh, the first one, you can enter in questions about act architecture, the protocol, uh, how to exchange the messages between the source, destinations, everything related to Airbyte itself. The second one is because there's a lot of contribute, uh, people who never contribute to an open source project, so but they want to do. And we, we see that and create this channel to give support and give instructions and give the assistance for, for that. And this the last topic is the office and demo hours. Uh, is the idea to leverage our office hours, bring more pract practical uh, demonstrations about some features, uh, how to use Airbyte, maybe in the future, uh, deep diving into the architecture of uh, Airbyte and show to people how to is, is done. So if you have any topic on mind, you send, can send me a message on Slack and we can discuss about that too. So I think for my side is that. All right, so I think for now we have some Q&A. So um, Rob is asking, can you say more about current or planned efforts around the Airflow integration? So uh, the Airbyte Airflow operator has been released. Actually, Marcos contributed that before he started working at Airbyte. Um, so that allows you to interact with um, Airbyte connections, um, launching connections um, via Airflow. However, um, I, I think you might be asking about running Airbyte syncs via Airflow. Is that? Oh, OK. Well, Rob turns out he was asking about the first one. So it's already out. Um, go check it out if you, like, if you like Airflow or Airbyte or both. Yes, uh, just making a very quickly uh, addendum. It's very simple uh, operator, so we can discuss to bring more features to that and maybe improve that. So a little bit of a surprise. I'm probably going to give a uh, a bonus demo after after Tuan about running uh, running um, Airbyte with the Airflow operator. So uh, just stay tuned for that. Um, I think. Okay, so John uh, Johnny from Medellin says, have you thought Airbyte can be used as a reverse ETL platform similar to Census or High Touch? We have actually, Sharif, if you want to answer that one. Yeah, the thought has crossed our mind. Uh, yeah, so 
um, the Airby, we, we, we fully designed the Airby protocol with that kind of thing in mind. Um, it's not something we focused on in terms of our, um, uh, our connector development roadmap at the moment, just based on um, kind of demand. Um, however, it is something that we anticipate we'll be working on. Though to be fair, I mean, it can, there's nothing preventing anyone from creating reverse ELT destinations today. Um, so that's, and when we already have a lot of data warehouse sources, um, which would allow you to do the typical ELT or reverse ELT um, flow of, you know, SAS to a database, synthesize some data sets, and then send them back to a SAS or API, um, that's still possible. It'll require a little bit more um, potentially additions to the Airbyte protocol just to, to make it more robust, but assuming you're working in a controlled environment, you can do that uh, today, really. Well, uh, we shipped that yesterday. That's a good answer. <laughs> um, well, uh, okay, so I think we'll probably have time for a few more questions and then I'll want to hand it off to, to, uh, to I see, Juan. Yeah, I see Mario is typing. Johnny Montoya says, I like your faces. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Wait, I made mine myself. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions come in. Well, if there is, if there are any more questions, uh, feel free to write them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end of the session if, if we have some more time or in Slack after the fact. Oh, Mario says, regarding the scheduling, I've seen that there is a ticket asking for this, but is it in the roadmap? Um, I assume you're asking about cron-based scheduling or yeah so that is in the roadmap um it's one of the things we'll be working on potentially in august um strictly bandwidth constrained at the moment uh it's one of the top features that people have been asking for and we fully recognize that so we'll get to it as soon as we can Awesome. So I'm gonna. So now uh, we'll answer any more questions. Please keep the questions coming in, but uh, we'll make sure to to answer them at the end. But now I want to uh, first off introduce our guest. So Tuan Nguyen is the CTO at June Solutions. They're doing some really awesome stuff over there. And Tuan actually set up a really cool way to deploy Airbyte with Terraform. And I don't want to steal too much of his thunder, but I know he has some really awesome stuff to show us today. Uh, so Sharif, if you could stop sharing. And uh, all right. Yeah. I will Stop hogging the screen. Awesome. All right, take it away, Tuan. Hello, guys. Um, thank you for having me. Um, hi, guys. Um, my name is Tuan, and I'm the CTO of June Solutions. Uh, I'm here today to talk about how we at June use um, Terraform to automate our AI deployments, uh, along with other cool open source technologies um, for a modern data stack. Uh, first off, let me introduce myself. Um, I have about nine years of experience working in data. Uh, my background is actually in physics and finance. Um, so like many of you, I presume I taught myself how to put, um, you know, Python, Java, um, SQL, and using a lot of the open source thing, cool open source technologies like API, Airflow, and, and DBT. And the open source data community is actually very vibrant and, and um, I, I love it, um, you know, a lot of what we are we um, able to do uh, today is possible, is made possible by the um, open source data community. So I want to give a shout out for that. Um, so I, I primarily work um, for big corporations um, in South Korea, in Vietnam, uh, in many different industries like e-commerce, um, retail, finance, sales service. Uh, so I, 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 I've been able to observe a trend um, that, um, you know, those companies, they used to rely a lot on um, proprietary technologies um, from providers like Oracle, IBM, or SAP. Um, it used to take them, uh, I don't know, three, three to um, about 30 plus people, uh, eight to 12 months, and a budget of uh, millions of dollars to, um, to do a data project. Um, to create a data warehouse, right? Uh, but fast forward to today with the advancement of um, cloud computing and um, this open source community, uh, we sorry we are able to do that with um, with three, a team a small team of three to five people, budget of thousands of dollars, 
and uh, a timeline of three months. And so that's amazing. Um, and um, but however, like um, all of this is is new, right? So some of the company, um, like it's it's hard for for like companies to actually um, use all of the new stuff, and 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 that is where we come in. Uh, we we are um, data as a service company, so very much similar to Netflix. You pay a monthly monthly uh, monthly fee. And we uh, would come in, and we had to build, um, build up the infrastructure, the framework, the foundations. Um, we have you build up the data pipelines, um, the data modeling, um, visualizations, and um, some data use cases like um, reverse ETL, for example. And um, so, another uh, target customers of, of, of ours is um, companies that that produce a lot of data. But um, they they don't want to keep a uh, data team in house, right? Because it's expensive, it takes time, and um, you know you, to to, um, to be able to success, you have to have a data lead who have a lot of experience in this area. So we have a lot of experts in different industries. We are team of the agnostics, um, and we work with a lot of cool tools. So we are here to help, and uh, happy to give a uh, free consultations um, if you guys want. Um, so with that out of the way, let me actually dive into today's topic. So Terraform, uh, for you uh, who, uh, you who, who don't know it, is um, an open source infrastructure as code software developed by HashiCorp. And um, so what um, what uh, an infrastructure as code tool is um, is that instead of you know you you go to the UI of your cloud providers um, like GCP or AWS and provision and create resources uh, by hand. So for example, like creating a project, um, configuring IAM, uh, creating VMs, setting up firewalls. Um, Terraform allow you to do all of that using code. And there's a lot of you know, benefits in doing that in that way. Um, first is um, <clears throat> it's reproducible, uh, meaning that like, so for example, if you have, um, you want to follow software engineering best practice, and have different environment for your data um, infrastructure, like that, uh, staging, subproduction. You can write one script, um, and then you have to chain up some of the parameters for different environments. So say if I, I want like for my dev environment, the VM to be a small size, for staging is to be mediums, and for production uh, to be a large um, size, I can, I can do that pretty easily. Um, also, like the Terraform code is actually modular, meaning that you can take pieces of these projects and use in other projects, uh, which is uh, very useful. So we as Tool Solution, we work with a lot of different customers, and you know it would be a nightmare for us to for every new customer to go in and you know configure everything um, in in the cloud with the cloud providers. So we actually uh, have a lot of um, Terraform code that uh, we wrote in house for different. Um, our providers and, and we use that to you know streamline the, the engagement with our new customers. And um, in, in, in today's session, I'm going to be sharing uh, some of the code uh, for that. Uh, next thing is that with um, infrastructure as code, you, you, you gain uh, this superpower, meaning that you have within control of your code, right? Um, you can um, see what chain, who changed it, um, you know, revert the change, and um, Collaborate, uh, collaborate on on, on the infrastructure. Um, things that used to be a bottleneck of, of, of tech lead, you know, it used to be that a tech lead would actually um, conflict one of the infrastructures and a VP decides to, um, to leave the company, then uh, that's going to be a huge trouble uh, for the company. Um, so actually, um, uh, using Terraform. Uh, so, so for today's demo, it actually takes a while for Terraform to provision the, all of the resources. So I will actually demo the um, do the tech demo first, and then we can come back and talk about what we do. Uh, it's quite simple to get started. Um, so I created a GitHub repo for this uh, called Modern Data Set, um, just for this event. So you guys can um, go to GitHub and check it out. I have a QR code um, and a link at the end of the presentations um, also. 
Um, so I will just copy the link of this. Um, I will go to Google Cloud Platform Project. So this is a typical uh, project that you have. Um, you, I have created a new project and a board building. And uh, with that, you'll be able to open it and activate a cloud shell. Um, so I will actually disconnect the cloud shell right here. Now you can run this locally, but um, you need to uh, install the SDK and set up authentications. But um, um, you can also run it um, on cloud shell as well, which is um, super fast. Uh, what we do is that we will clone this um, GitHub directory um, to the Cloud Shell instance and run some uh, simple Terraform commands. So Terraform actually is actually um, pre-installed in, in the uh, GCP Cloud Shell. So uh, unlike if you're running it locally, you have to install it. Uh, if you're Cloud Shell, um, you can um, just use Terraform here. So uh, first of all, let me call my project. Uh, locally, see that it's here, change to the, uh, this project. For here, I need to set some of the parameters. So like, um, for example, project name has to be, um, you know, globally unique in, in GCP. So I have a, a variable file that I have set, set up before and just copy that in. And then with that, there are only two more commands that I need to run. The first one is Terraform init. This will um, install on the package um, needed um, for Terraform to run this this um, this code. And the second command is Terraform apply. Now what this does is that um, it will actually scan all of the files in the directories and look up all the configurations for um, um, for machines and for different um, resource cloud resources. And it will make you call up the uh, Google Cloud API. So I will make you authorize it. And then um, here are all of the things that it will create. I will say yes, confirm. And um, yeah, so Terraform is actually calling up the Google Cloud API to create all of these resource points. And I will uh, come back to the presentations to um, to talk about what 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 I would create in here, and then let this um, run in the back uh, in the background. So uh, let's uh, take a step back and actually talk about the uh, modern day six data stack. Uh, now this is a fairly new terms, and um, you know there's a lot of uh, definition out there. So uh, this is just um, my explanations of it. So I think that uh, modern data sets is um, a set of technologies um, that when used together, um, allow you to set time, money, and effort. It's also allow you the, the, the ability to scale up and down um, the deployment really easily. And um, um, yeah, and, and uh, do that more efficiently, enable capabilities that, um, that were not av available before. So there are actually four um, components, main components of a modern data stack. The first one is a, 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 a data integration, integrator. So it used to be that you have to write custom code for, for different sources and you have to maintain that code, you have to deploy that code, um, like in, in, in Airflow, for example. Uh, but with tools like Airby, um, you, can, um, you can easily integrate to hundreds of sources um, and you, know, just, you have, just have to authenticate um, the request and, and that's about it and choose what data to replicate. Um, second thing is a cloud-based columnar uh, data warehouse. Um, so uh, data warehouse nowadays is, is very powerful, uh, mostly because um, it's columnar, so it's more suited towards um, analytical query and also it's running on cloud, so it has the ability to um, scale up and down um, really easily. So uh, we are, we are demoing with uh, BigQuery today. Uh, the next thing is an in-data warehouse information tool. So it seems to be that the data warehouse actually a bottleneck in the ETL process. Um, and uh, you know, to, to try and um, ease the workload on the data warehouse, uh, people actually uh, used to do the transformation before loading the data in. So this is to be ETL, not uh, ELT, um, you know, to offload some of the workload um, on the data warehouse. 
And it's literally that, you know, the, the AI tools like Tableau or Power BI you know, actually do some of the, that transformation as well. But, um, you know, since, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, um, the uh, how base column, the data warehouse is actually very much powerful. You um, can run petabyte scale query in a matter of seconds. Um, so a lot of the modeling and the transformation is actually centralized now in the um, data warehouse and, and, and you have a typical um, DLT process. And then finally, um, um, you know, um, a BI tool that allow you to actually um, connect to the data warehouse, explore the data and do some um, deep, deep transformation and data discovery. So this is actually a modern data stack. Uh, in, in, in my understanding. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of other tools like metadata management. Uh, you have uh, you have tests, you have uh, data lineage, and um, a lot of different and other tools. And you have at least sort of core components of a modern data stack. So let's actually look at the um, the, the, the graph here. Um, so like to be able to run this on on cloud, Google Cloud for this for this uh, example. Um, you have to um, do a lot of stuff. You have to create a project, enable building. Uh, you have to, like for AI, for example, you have to uh, create a VM. You have to install AI in it. You have to open different ports. You have to create service account um, you know, for AI to actually um, authenticate uh, requests um, to the data warehouse. You have to enable a uh, compute API for, 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 for the VMs, enable a uh, BigQuery API. You know, a lot of stuff you have to create in the data set. Um, so uh, Terraform will actually do all of that uh, for you in the, in the background. And it's actually doing that in the background. So uh, we, like after it's done running and, and probably in all of the resources, I think it's, it takes about uh, three to five minutes. Um, you'll be able to connect to the API instance. You will have the service account to authenticate all of the resources for different tools. Um, you have metabase um, ready, so you can just connect to that and then, um, you know, this discovery and do some um, dashboard um, on the query data. I also have uh, Airflow, which is not in this, but um, like, like if you want to use Airflow to, uh, to um, orchestrate um, different events, different things in your pipeline, you can also do that. Um, you want actually create a data set here for you. Uh, from DBT, um, like, uh, all, all we need for this is just a service account because uh, DBT is not from on, on, on any machine mostly. So um, you can just actually go to their website, create a fee account, and um, either service account, and um, that will be uh, sufficient. So uh, let's actually go back and and, and check the um, the progress. Now we can see here that it said that um, the deployment has been complete. We have uh, created 20 uh, resources. We have some output variable here as well. So this is actually the service account uh, for different services and you can access that as well. Um, let's actually um, go to our new project and see. Um, so, uh, It's our new project. And we see that we have three VMs here and one BigQuery data set. Uh, in the three VMs, we will have uh, one for Airbyte, one for um, one for Airflow, and, 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 and one for uh, MetaBase. Uh, this is just for them also. Um, this is only sort of you know, for exploring um, and, and, and not suited for production environment, uh, obviously. Um, but, you know, hopefully this will have you get started uh, with using the modern data set um, easily. So let's actually um, copy the comment to SSH to the instance and see if our um, if our instance is running. And go back here to the cloud shell. Uh, let's see comment here. And um, SSH to the um, in the background, what the script uh, did was is created a VM on Google Cloud uh, with a startup script. The startup script actually installed all of the uh, deployments to run AI. So uh, Docker, Docker Compose, you know, 
formed the repo locally. And you know, every time you start up, you should actually run a local control uh, app in the directory. So uh, let's check. You see that, um, oh, it's in just finished um, provisioning. So we can um, view port forward now to access the instance. Let's actually uh, exit the SSS um, sessions and um, I can do a port forward here to the uh, cloud sharing instance. I've done that. Now the, uh, the, the port. The two ports, 8000 and 8001, is uh, forward um, to, to this local collection. And you can actually go there and you do a web preview on port 8000. And just like that, you have access to AirPy. Um, you can do the same thing for, uh, for Airflow and for for database um, as well. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I want to uh, quickly also demo um, you know the ability to set up our destinations using the uh, service account that we created. So I will actually skip on modding and only. Um, Set up the destinations. Uh, to get the service account key, uh, you can go back here and uh, you can run a simple Terraform output comment uh, like this. And actually, we will output the value of this, um, this, um, this variable here. And then um, since this space is for encoded, we have to decode it. Uh, oops, I think I have the. It's supposed to be underscore. Yeah, and just like that, you have a service account um, ready to use with the permissions to write click query. Now, just a quick reminder that um, you know, the service account is actually a very um, sensitive uh, variable, so uh, be sure to not share that. Yeah. Okay, we can paste the service account here. Uh, the default data set, I think I created one in the CRM. Uh, the project ID is our project ID here. I can do a set of destinations. And it should be able to connect to uh, to the destination without an issue. Well, that's kind of fast. Yeah, and um, just like that, you have a modern data stack where you do such a thing as this. Um, let's actually go back to the slide. I have one more slide to share. Oops. So here's actually my AirPy wish list. Um, for the for the stuff that I uh, love to see in AirPy. Um, first off, um, CRI, you know, the ability to actually interact with um, AirPy using CRI. It's, um, it's, it's, it's needed, you know. Um, it's, it's a lot of different. Um, um, custom operations. Um, secondly, um, you know, like um, many of you um, mentioned, like like um, I think Sharif mentioned earlier, that um, Apple actually have a, a um, Apple actually had an Apple operator already, but it would be great to also create um, operators for some of the other comments um, orchestration workflow tools like Prefix or Dax, uh, for example. It will have integrate uh, AI with um, the open source community better. Um, AI handchart, you know, with, with handchart, I think we can also um, deploy um, AI is on Kubernetes within Terraform as well. So we have F, we already have like internally have an Airflow um, deployed um, using um, a handchart. So um, authentications uh, right now, as you see. Uh, we need to um, do SSS uh, pop forward. Uh, it's okay, but like it's not the like super most user friendly thing to do. 
next thing is that um, you know uh, the ability to chain uh, the the default replication strategy. It's like uh, by default, I think it's on like uh, full replications, uh, but like when you have hundreds um, tables, you know, when you have thousand tables, and you have to go in and chain each and every one of them, uh, it's a pain to do. Uh, so if it either like implement something with CLI to do that, and, or you know in the UI to do that. And last but not least, uh, who here is not annoyed with only the underscore table, like ten table inside their data set. So I think it's a great idea to actually have a centralized ten data set to store all of the um, staging tables uh, to make um, the destination actually clear. So uh, with that, um, if you'd like to book a free consultation there, you can scan this QR code, go to our web channel. If you want to access to the GitHub repo that I just show, you can do that on the right hand side or reach out to me at my email. And that's it for me. Thank you so much, Tuan. That was awesome. Uh, again, like as as he as he mentioned, uh, take out your phones and scan these QR codes. Uh, if you yeah, the one on the one on the left will will uh, take you to uh, uh, Tuan Tuan's you. company. They'll give you a date. That, yeah. Well, uh, sorry. If you want to say it better yourself. Yeah, uh, the one on the left actually uh, take uh, you to um, book a, a free consultation with Drone Solutions, and the one on the right is actually to access the um, the GitHub repo. Awesome. And so, Abi, I just want to follow up on a couple of questions that were asked in yeah. the chat right Go while Tuan was going. Um, so Mario is asking about support for multiple workspaces. We said that in the coming month we'll support multiple workspaces. So he was clarifying, is that in the UI? Uh, yes, it will be in the UI. Currently, the API already supports this, but in the UI, you only have access to one workspace, which is the default workspace. So that's one thing to think about there. Um, Ken asks, have you tried using GCP IAP to expose the Airbyte instance publicly while keeping it accessible to only organization employees? Um, in the in the future, we imagine that this would be a pluggable solution probably for off. Um, however, we, we haven't gotten around to something like that yet. Um, right now, uh, we're focused actually, on. Actually, yeah. we, have, we have done that at Zoom Solutions and it works. Oh, OK, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, so uh, Sharif, if you could take. Uh, Mane's question in the, do you see the questions tab? I do. So Mani was asking, what do we think about Postgres as a placement, I think for BigQuery in Tuan's example, uh, as an open source tool, um, it could be a pain for performance if you need to manage IoT stream data. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I personally haven't tried that kind of thing before, so it's hard for me to speak up toward whether Postgres would be the right solution here. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that Postgres can handle some pretty high loads, so I guess it really comes down to, to your workload here um, and what mm -hmm. you're trying to do with, with the data, how you're querying it. Um, Mane, maybe we can take this into Slack if this is something you're curious about. Yeah, Tuan, Tuan actually, that's an interesting question to ask you. Like, If you were to replace BigQuery with I mean, is there really a, a viable open source alternative to, to BigQuery? Uh, yeah, we can actually use Postgres, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually, to host Postgres, you have to run on VM, right? Uh, so it really depends on, um, it's, it's come down to the cost and uh, benefit. Like if you are running on Postgres, um, the performance obviously will not be as good as BigQuery for an article query. Uh, it might be cheaper because like, you're only paying this much. But this might be more expensive because you know BigQuery is um, quite efficient in terms of cost as well. But I, I, we have some clients um, that run into uh, uh, issues with Postgres because um, uh, they, they scale up their operations and they have a lot of data. Uh, so I, I would look for some of the uh, more you know scalable tools. So. Sounds reasonable. Uh, I think. Think. Uh, 
Um, I think Johnny's is. I'm wondering if that's a a question about plans for airbytes and tools like Apache Amundsen. Uh, I haven't heard of Amundsen before. I'd have to look into it. Um, yes, it's a data catalog a solution. So I think it is doable to do um, to work on that. I, I didn't uh, implement um, with Amundsen yet, but I think it's something that Arbyte can work and be a very good uh, integration with. Um, cool. Okay, so I know we're we're a bit over time. Uh, so if you if uh, if you need to get going, that's uh, that's totally cool. First of all, I want to thank uh, Tuan uh, so much. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on this call and uh, and showing off what you've done with Airbyte. Uh, again, uh, if you want to if you want to deploy the same example that Tuan just deployed, he. He very very kindly uh, saved all of this information in a in a in in the GitHub repo that's in this QR code that Jared also shared in the chat. You can go spin this up as long as you have access to a Google Cloud console and your a GCP account. You can go uh, spin this uh, spin this demo up, and uh, that's in the that's gonna be that's gonna be about it. Uh, just as a quick bonus content for anyone that was interested in the uh, in the Airflow in the Airflow integration, I was just gonna do a quick Airflow demo. But if people have uh, have any more questions, uh, feel free to uh, take it to the Slack, and um, we would uh, we would absolutely uh, love for love love for everyone to be to be interacting. Uh, Tuan, can I uh, can I offer uh, to send to to send people your way uh, in terms of like asking questions about 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 the demo? So Tuan's in the Tuan's in the Slack. Uh, if you have any questions about the Terraform demo, if you or if you again want a free consultation, uh, go ahead and. Uh, uh, head over to uh, June Solutions and and Tuan. So uh, Thanks, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much again. Um, no uh, so just <laughs> bye, Tuan. Uh, hi, Marcus. So uh, so actually, Marcus, it's nice that you're here. This is going to be like a quick uh, quick bonus content. Um, so. Marcos here actually designed our Airflow operator Airbyte Air plugin a while ago, and uh, I'm I actually wrote a script that um, that basically allows you to deploy Airbyte and Airflow and immediately set up a connection between the two, so you can uh, basically just create create a DAG that runs your syncs for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and and this is actually committed to the Mono repo, so you can go ahead and try this out immediately after this call. So uh, uh, let me go ahead and start and start sharing. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Whoa. Okay. So, uh, Marcos, are we good? Can we can we see it? Yes. Can go. Right. Cool. Cool. So basically, we're, we have this resources uh, this resources directory in the Airbyte Mono repo. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, basically go to examples. Um, uh, we go to Airflow, and now in this uh, in this directory, we have a up.sh script. So uh, first, we can just run the down.sh script just to make sure everything's cleaned up. And uh, here, we're going to now just go ahead and run up.sh. Now, as we can see on the, let's go ahead and check out what this is, what this is doing on the left. So on the left, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're basically uh, uh, we're spinning up Airbyte here from the from the main directory. And then we're coming to this examples folder, and we're uh, and what we're doing is we're using the Docker Compose uh, uh, file right here. Now we had to make a lot of configurations to this to make to 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 make this run. So this is going to be perfect for running Airflow locally. Um, so we we basically set up all this configuration so that it will work with Airbyte. Normally, if you had to do on uh, do it on your own, it's a little more it's it's a little more difficult, and you have to configure it. But here, you can come and get all the all of the configuration that you need to uh, to run uh, the Airbyte plugin successfully. Now, what we notice here is we have our Airbyte connection ID. It'll ask us to enter this uh, connection ID. What this is going to do for us is go it's going to automatically create a uh, a Airflow connection for us. So what we're going to do is we're uh, first, going to go ahead and uh, basically uh, head over to Airbyte. 
So we're gonna, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, basically create a, a really quick uh, source. We're gonna use the Pokey API because I believe it is the fastest way to create a source in, in, in Airbytes. So if you're aiming for the true Airbytes speed run, you definitely have to use the Pokey API. Um, so we'll we'll go create that. We'll create our destination. We'll just for now, just to show off uh, Airflow, we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna use local JSON for now. Um, so interestingly enough, in this script as well, I have also included a uh, actually a superset installation. So what this demo was is eventually going to be is it's going to be kind of a it's going to be a demo that kind of demos something that that was very similar to what Tuan did in GCP, but actually on, uh, locally. Um, so uh, it all right. So now that we have our our local JSON, we'll just go ahead and uh, create the connection here. And what we want to do is we want to make this manual. Uh, it's just so that we can have Airflow run our syncs instead of uh, instead of us automatically running syncs. And we can go ahead and uh, set, set up our connection. We'll go over to this connections page and see this, uh, this ID right here. We're just going to grab this ID. I'm just going to. Uh, we're just going to go and grab that ID and see now we're, we're go, we'll go back to our terminal and we'll paste that ID from the uh, from the URL in here. And what that's going to do is that's going to basically use the Airflow API to uh, to basically automatically create a connection for us. And now what we what we now uh, the script has actually also created has also brought up Airflow for us. So we're going to sign in with our extremely secure credentials of Airflow and Airflow. Now, you'll see a DAG import error for here for a bit, but that's because the variable is actually being created with the API. Uh, so we're going to wait for that to go away. <laughs> yeah, there we go. OK, cool. So now that when that variable was finally created with the API, that basically uh, got loaded into our pre-made DAG that we that, that we have in the example, which is now here. So now, as we uh, we've basically entered our connection ID into the into the script, so we're going to go ahead and basically run our Airflow DAG, which will be very exciting. All right, so that's running. And uh, what we can do is we can go over to our Airbyte connection, and we can see it succeeded. So. I didn't touch it. You saw it. I didn't touch it. I didn't run it here. It was manual. So we had Airflow basically uh, complete a Airbyte sync for us. Uh, if you want, there's and the thing is, is that this in, in the future we're going to have kind of like a more uh, basically a more fleshed out version of this where we, like I said, there's actually also a superset installation here, so we can have a basically the Pokey API. Uh, Basically, replicate to a Postgres database. And then you can just then you can throw it, throw on an automatic uh, superset visualization on top of that. So um, basically, if you want to if you want to start, this is kind of like a quick start for anyone that wants to at least try out syncing syncing data using using an Airflow DAG. So that was kind of just a, a quick demo of that. Um, so gonna stop sharing that. Cool. Uh, uh, so hopefully that was that, that that was cool. Again, you can go try this out yourself. Just go into the mono repo, go to slash resources slash example slash airflow, and you can go ahead and uh, and try that out for yourself. Yeah, I think there is one question, with John. Uh, yes, uh, the airflow is gonna wait for Airby to finish the job. You can have some parameters there. You can choose the timeout and things like that. So you mm -hmm. can control. Cool. All right. So I know we're well over time. That was just kind of like some bonus content, but uh, th thank you everyone for sticking around. Yeah, uh, we we still, we still got a got got some of you in here. Um, so that's going to be it for uh, this month's community call. So we we've already started lining up uh, lining up guests for our next community call, and it's going to be really exciting. We've been like Marcos has said, like I've said, well, it's been growing a lot. We love the community interaction. Please talk to us. We. We just want to hear feedback from everyone about 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 Airbyte, and we just want to help you get up in production with it. So just <laughs> make sure to let us know. 
Uh, and thank you so much uh, for everyone that, that joined us today.